Welcome to the Sandwich Crunch, where we navigate the trends and issues for seniors and boomers at home, the workplace, and the community. Very excited to be here tonight, and we've got a wonderful guest. Her name is Colleen Gavin, and we will be talking about senior issues around yoga and exercise. So yoga and seniors is going to be quite an exciting topic because I love yoga. So let's get to yoga and seniors, and I'm very excited to have you. Thank and you. I know how important yoga is to any age group, but you were introduced to me with, by someone who does work with seniors and has seen your work and how you navigate and work with seniors in that arena. But first, I wanted everybody to learn a bit about you, so if you'd share a little bit more about yourself. Sure. Um, my name is Colleen Gavin, and I started doing yoga about 14 years ago, 13 or 14 years, and I started teaching just about right away. Um, teaching is, is in my nature. I was also a high school science teacher as well. Oh. Yeah, so um, I took to yoga right away because I love movement. And what I really loved about yoga was that it helped me to quiet my mind as well because I'm a person that tends towards stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So yoga was something I could do where I moved my body, but at the same time, I also felt calm and centered. So it was really a winning situation for me. Mm -hmm. And then I found that I love to share that with other people because that tends to be something that everybody needs is just to relieve stress and also move their bodies, enjoy their bodies and feel good. Yeah, that's a great thing you mentioned, relieving stress and their mind and the body connection. Because a lot of people think you have to meditate just to get that mind-body connection, relaxation. Right. But yoga actually creates that. Yes. And yeah. you don't mm -hmm. actually have to sit there in a yogi fashion and you can right. actually do some amazing movements while de-stressing. True, because a lot of people find it hard to sit and meditate. You know, as soon as they sit down, they get very me. uncomfortable. <laughs> right, and, and me too. Um, I mean, I've come a long way, but uh, what yoga does is because you're moving, I call it meditation of movement, because mm -hmm. you're moving and linking your breath with your movements, it's a little more accessible for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And then your body learns to be still, and then maybe you can sit and meditate as well, maybe not. Mm -hmm. I have a student, um, she's, I believe, in her 80s. She might be her late 70s, but she told me that since she's started practicing yoga, she can now increase her meditation from 10 minutes to 12, and she's been go going up and up. So That's, that's great. Kind of, yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, you also brought something up about your breath because for so many as they age, their breath, actually, they, they never learned how to properly breathe. Right. And yoga teaches you the proper breathing movements. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, I would imagine helps seniors actually not only recover better from certain illnesses and also chronic illness, but also helps them because they're getting a lot more oxygen. They're oxygenating, oxygenating their body. Right. So yoga is primarily about your breath. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, if you can breathe, you can do yoga. You just have to show up and breathe. Even if you sat there and breathed the whole time you did yoga. And you were absolutely right. People don't always breathe a full breath. Mm -hmm. And just to do that alone is very powerful. And then to get a full breath, you have to have proper alignment and posture, right? Because if you've been into this rounded upper body, which a lot of seniors do mm -hmm. have, all of us have from being on computers and driving cars, then they're not getting a full breath. So if they can sit up tall, their diaphragm can move fully, and you can breathe properly. And as you said, it's very healthy. But it's also connected to your um, parasympathetic nervous system, which is your relaxation nervous system. Mm -hmm. So if you can breathe in a restful way, a full breath, then you can turn on your healing, your inner healing abilities of your body just by breathing fully, which is pretty cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Because I love as much that we can do that's natural for our body right. as opposed to so much medication and all these other things because I've seen dramatic changes in people when they can come off of medications given you know the, the slow release right. from them mm -hmm. but integrate the natural elements such as yoga. Absolutely, yes. And so I mean I think a really important thing to say about seniors in yoga is they should check with their doctors mm -hmm. before coming to yoga. That's really important just to make sure that it's a good option for them and then also to seek out a, an instructor in a class that where the instructor is informed about how to work with seniors because seniors do have their uh, unique needs and then um, to just move slowly with it. Right. So w when they've talked to their doctor mm -hmm. and the doctor said, yes, you can go work with yoga, now they're seeking that yoga teacher, right. how do they determine that that teacher is qualified to work with seniors? I would just talk to them. Mm -hmm. You know, most I think most yoga teachers will be honest about what they can and cannot do and what mm -hmm. they specialize in. Um, 
around here, yet yeah, you can find them probably through word of mouth is the easiest way. Um, you know, I know all the yoga teachers in the area and everybody's very qualified, um, but it's just a matter of what they, what they do specifically. So just talking to them and also letting them know, listen, I have high blood pressure that's, you know, that I've just recently started controlling, or I have osteoporosis, or I have bad arthritis in my knees, I have a hip replacement, all these things that the yoga teacher needs to know them. You know, sometimes I have to get them, I really get them out of people. They don't want to say, mm -hmm. you know, seniors, they've been dealing with pain for a long time, perhaps, and mm -hmm. it's not that big of a deal to them. They don't think anything of it. Oh yeah, I've just had, um, you know, I have a vertebrae missing in my spine or, you know, it it, by the way, I mind. had major back <laughs> surgery last year, you know, just these things that actually right. are really important to know mm -hmm. in class. That is a big deal to know those things. And you're right, it is hard to pull that out of seniors because right. they're afraid to share that information or they just, they're, and oftentimes it's also privacy. They just don't want to share that for with sure. anyone. Yes. But for everyone, no matter what you are doing for exercise, yoga or any type of exercise, you need to seek out a physician's approval and talk with them as right. well as you need to disclose this information, whether it's with a practitioner, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a, a non-medical practitioner or a yoga practitioner or whatever. So that is very valid and very, very important for the seniors to know. Right. Yes. And the other thing I always say is that um, I also teach teenagers yoga. Oh, how fun. Yes. Yeah, so there's a big difference I, that I found when I started teaching seniors was that Teenagers, as soon as they feel this little discomfort, you know, and in a stretch, they're like, ah, oh, that's painful, like, you know, that hurts. <laughs> and seniors, they'll be in excruciating pain and won't say a thing, they just think it's normal, right? So I say, yoga should not be painful, you should not have any pain. Yes, you're going to have a stretch, but it shouldn't be painful. So a lot of seniors will put up with a lot of pain, mm -hmm. but in yoga, it should be feeling good actually it yeah, should not be painful <laughs> you would hope they would not know that but it's interesting how you yeah. say the seniors are you know oh my or the, the students are a little telling well, right you. they're not as you know they don't have as much experience with pain I have this vision of these students, though, like stretching all over the oh, place. They can or do like a lot. standing up here. I mean, they are all over the place. So the seniors are, might not be quite as flexible, although there are a lot of extremely flexible seniors out there because they there really are. spent a lot of time on their body. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, another thing we might want to point out is just that yoga is not just twisting your body into a pretzel position. You know, kind of I mentioned you could breathe, you can do yoga. A lot of people think of yoga as the people they see, maybe celebrities or pictures of people doing impressive poses. Mm -hmm. You know, right, they think, I can't, that's not for me. <laughs> or a lot of men think it's definitely not for them. But I have a lot of men, especially in my senior classes. I mean, a lot for around here, mm -hmm. I'd say. And um, it's really just about being present, being there, mm -hmm. showing up, and moving your body and breathing. So anybody can do it. Well, you know, a lot of athletes, and I worked with a lot of athletes when I did a lot of fundraisers with this in the Bay Area, and a mm -hmm. lot of them, male athletes, do utilize yoga Absolutely. as part of their format of exercise because it helps them keep them flexible, especially a lot of the football players. Right. Because if they can't maneuver their bodies, mm -hmm. it's harder for them to get around. So yoga is a really nice balance. Yeah, that, so. absolutely. It's not just a woman's thing. No, not at all. I actually, um, <laughs> at Bret Hart, I once taught the wrestling team yoga. Great. My friend was the coach years ago, but it was a lot of fun. Oh, that's great. So we were talking about you know, the working with the athletes and the wrestlers, and, and now we're going to go back into the senior format and talk about you've got a couple of little tools that seniors can actually use at home. Absolutely, And yes. so mm -hmm. I thought you could share with us what those tools are, and they look like they're really simple to find in your closet. Absolutely. <laughs> so you could just use a tennis ball, mm -hmm. and a tennis ball you can place beneath your foot and massage it on the bottom of your foot. So for example, you could stand up and do that if mm -hmm. your balance is, is good. You can hold on with one hand to the chair or the wall. So would you kind of like roll it along your foot like yeah, this? Yeah, you so just this roll it. So this is the floor and you roll the hand like this. It's like giving okay. yourself an acupressure treatment. So that feels really good. It feels <laughs> really good. And I do it with um, my, C I have two kinds of senior classes. I have a, a gentle yoga for seniors mm -hmm. where we are um, standing up and doing poses, we're lying down, we, move, we teach them how to stand up off the floor, get up and down, and we use chairs for support. And then I have a yoga at Foothill Village, which is a assisted living community where we stay in the chair. So we'll use the tennis ball sitting in the chair underneath our foot and, and roll it 
or you could stand up and use it. You could do that when you're watching TV. Exactly. There's lots of yoga you can do while you're watching TV. <laughs> it's hard to pay attention to your breath, but. <laughs> That's true. The other thing you can use is a tie. And um, there are these things called yoga straps, which mm -hmm. you can buy. But I sometimes just use neckties, get them out of the closet. And so you could take um, your old necktie or your husband's old necktie, or, and you use it around the base of your foot. So you just place it below your foot and you can straighten out your leg and stretch the hamstring. Or you can lie down on your back and do the same thing. So you're lying down on your back, you've got the strap around your foot and you use it to stretch. And so just kind hold of pull on. your foot mm -hmm. up over as far up as you can without causing pain. Exactly, without okay. causing pain, key. So you just breathe and you can move in and out as you're breathing. So we're gonna go back to the breath. Yes. I'd like you to describe to someone who's listening and watching, or maybe you can even, it's hard to demonstrate the way we're seated right now, but to demonstrate right. and talk about what is a true breath. I mean, a truly deep breath that one incorporates in yoga. Sure, I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of yoga breath, but just the basic one would be that you wanna be sitting up nice mm -hmm. and tall and feeling your shoulders glide down your back. And I like to say that you feel your collarbones lift, kind of mm -hmm. float upwards, mm -hmm. yeah. And so that a lot of times I have people close their eyes because it's easier to tune inward if you've got your eyes closed, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not gathering information from the outside world. You're tuning your senses inward, mm -hmm. that's how I like to put it. So when you're sitting up straight like that and breathing, you just begin by noticing your breath moving in and out. So people could do that at home right now if they wanted to. So just mm -hmm. close their eyes and simply notice as you breathe in and as you breathe out. And then we shift our breath to just through the nose. So we close our mouth and breathe in and out through our nose. So you just breathe in and breathe out. And then to get this really deep diaphragmatic breath, which is what we're often using in yoga, mm -hmm. is you're allowing the breath to, you're allowing your belly to expand when you inhale. Mm -hmm. So as you breathe in, you might place your hands on your abdomen and as you breathe in, you might feel your belly expand a little bit, and then as you exhale, it just relaxes back. Right, so it just goes in. And a lot of us breathe backwards. So we breathe in and we're sucking in mm -hmm. instead of allowing our belly to expand. But your diaphragm is pushing down when you breathe in, right? Drawing air into your lungs. Mm -hmm. So that pushes your organs out, which is why your belly goes out. So you wanna be able to get that full breath. So I like to think of it as not so complicated, just very simple. You breathe in and your torso expands three-dimensionally. So you can close your eyes and you just breathe in. Your torso expands three-dimensionally and as you breathe out, it relaxes. So that's, that's it in simple so terms. It's calming. Yeah, really and then is. you can add in all sorts of, we do other breath things, you know, with um, making a little bit of a whisper sound in the back of your throat, which you might have been able to hear with the microphone or not, I'm not sure, and that's called ujjayi. There's different types of breath, but mm -hmm. just simply breathing in and out deeply is, is good enough. Now, I have a question because I know I've just had to deal with this. I actually went to my chiropractor. I went to San Jose. I mean, I have a, I have a favorite chiropractor here, but I have my original chiropractor in the Bay Area, and he was right. also my personal trainer. So I went right. down to meet with him. We had an hour and a half to you know, work out on my body to get a get it back in shape right and we talked about the breath mm -hmm. but we talked about something you also talked about how we all are slumped over right oftentimes on the computer or driving mm -hmm. and as seniors that's a very significant issue especially with the back and uh, mm -hmm. with the bone structure and so on so the breathing that you're talking about when you're sitting in that upright position mm -hmm. is very relaxing it also expands not only the rib cage but you can feel it in your back yeah and you your that. shoulders right yeah, it releases a lot of stress in this area mm -hmm. and this area. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just what a little bit of breath can do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's what I try to encourage my students, to, yoga students to do is just, can you breathe every day? Can you take some conscious breaths every day? You don't have to make a big deal out of it. It doesn't have to be anything esoteric. Just take a few conscious breaths and then maybe twice a day and then keep increasing that. Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of studies have shown that actually just doing a little bit every day is more beneficial than doing it once a week, say for 
three hours, you know, I'm exaggerating, but yeah, that someone might do that, you know, mm -hmm. just work out really hard for three hours. It's actually more beneficial with yoga as well as exercise every day, just a little bit, mm -hmm. even if it's five minutes. Well, I agree with you on yeah. that. So what other things do you work with with seniors? Because I would imagine mm -hmm. that you're dealing with a lot of chronic illness, as mm -hmm. we've talked about, and like you said, osteoporosis, they may have a hip issue, they may have a back issue, and they're dealing with certain types of pain. Right. What are some of the most complicated issues that you are dealing with with a lot of seniors? That is mm -hmm. where they will truly benefit from yoga. Not that everybody won't, everybody will, but right. those that are most complicated, where do you find they benefit the most? Um, I think that the biggest benefit when I, I went and I surveyed all my students in preparation for this, just to see, you know, mm -hmm. what what do you feel? What are your per perceived benefits? You know, mm -hmm. it's not a scientific study, but and the biggest one was balance that they felt. So a big issue is people falling down, of course, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, we know that we lo lose our bone density naturally as we age, mm -hmm. you know, and. Um, we can do something, yoga can help increase bone density, but it also increases your agility and your ability to balance just through practicing it. Mm -hmm. So most of them said that that was their biggest benefit was increasing their balance. And then I also had many people say that it decreased their pain. So people have pain for so many reasons, you know, whether it's arthritic pain, um, most of it's arthritic pain, <laughs> or so, right, just you, like you it. talked about a spine being out, people have scoliosis, people have all sorts of issues that they've mm -hmm. come with. And just by breathing better, it actually helps reduce your pain. In addition to just increasing the range of motion in your joints and little things like that, moving, lubricating your joints that we do in yoga. So I'd say that would be another benefit that people have talked about. Um, as far as chronic illnesses, a lot of it is just the being able to turn on your parasympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. So that's a part of your autonomic nervous system, the one you don't control, right? And then one of the one part of your autonomic nervous system is your sympathetic. That's your fight or flight. That's okay. stress mode. I was going to ask you to explain these because yes. some people are going to say, what the heck is that? I know, that? right? So, so fight or flight state, and we all know that, right? Where right. your heart is beating fast and you're ready to, to move. And it's shooting cortisol throughout your body, sending cortisol. And, and we need that in, in certain situations. It's important, but not all the time, right? Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of us, were under chronic stress, so we have more of that going on. So to be able to turn on your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your relaxed state, is when your body can heal, it digests, it's able to do that. It can't mm -hmm. do that when it's stressed because it's busy fight, fighting or running away, right? So that's one of the biggest benefits for okay. chronic illness is just to be able to self-heal. And that's what you want to do. Right. And we're, we're living longer. Right, yes. And you know, men are living to 76 to 78. Women are living at least five years longer than that. Right. And we're just continuing to live longer and longer and longer. Right. So, and you're also in a community here, which I don't know if you're aware of, but uh, we have the largest percentage of seniors per capita really? in the U.S. I did not know that. So you have a lot of senior population here to right. serve. Right. <laughs> That's great. I, um, I think that out of all the people that I teach yoga to, um, my teaching the seniors is the most fun for me. Or mm -hmm. It's all fun. I shouldn't say that, but it's just very rewarding because the, the seniors that I work with see benefits very quickly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing how quickly they see it, whereas other people don't, and I'm not sure why that is exactly, but I find that when I'm done teaching the senior classes, whether it's the chair-based at Foothill mm -hmm. Village or my more, act, it's a little more active at um, Family for Fitness is where I do that, they are done with it and they're just, they feel great and they are very grateful and gracious and they have a lot of stories to tell and, I and that's enjoy what it. makes it fun yeah i enjoy it well the other thing i love about yoga and the breathing aspect that you're talking about too is if you're standing in the grocery line and it happens to be one of those busy weekends you happen to get in big trees or the market and everybody's here from out of town good place to be in line and, you're, and that's a good place to practice breathing, breathing absolutely <laughs> when you're feeling impatient stressed and yes yeah so you know, we're overly stressed out you're right yeah Definitely, you can practice it anywhere. <laughs> I know, I had talked to Debbie Ponte mm -hmm. about the, the, your program. Right. And she and I had talked about how seniors would come in and, and as they joined assisted living, and how so many of them had this impression that they had to do Jane Fonda quote unquote style workout. They never right. realized that this is actually considered 
oh, exercise is a, not, not everybody likes that word, but physical fitness. Right. You know, but it's, it's, a, it's an excellent form of keeping the body not only toned, mm -hmm. but also keeping it, like you said, maintaining that balance. Right. And that is significant for people as they get older. Absolutely. Yes. And um, I was reading another study about that yoga is maybe, according to this study, one of the best forms of physical exercise for the elderly because of it because it is more accessible and there's no impact on your joints and it hits all the four big parts of exercise endurance strength flexibility and balance yeah so it gets all four of those things mm -hmm. and, and you could be in a chair while you're doing it or even in a bed if you were bed bound you could do some yoga there too now how do you work with someone who's in bed so if someone's watching you and they say, how can I do this in my bed? In because bed. some people... Well, the breathing would be the first, first thing. thing. Absolutely. And then it would just be simple arm, ex a lot of arm exercises, even if it was just, and you can't see my feet, but just flexing your feet and relaxing with the breath. So you mm -hmm. might inhale and you flex your feet, bringing your toes back towards your shins and exhale, relax. And, and it's okay just to even do a tiny exactly. bit. Exactly. Okay. So just that little bit of, of inhaling and, and you might move your hands at the same time. And, and sometimes we do cross brain things. So I might inhale and take my right arm up and and flex my left foot and exhale and bring it down and just doing that cross brain activity with your breath and moving your body you're, you are doing something yeah now there are many forms of yoga yes and mm -hmm. are there some forms that you would not recommend for sure seniors? <laughs> yes definitely any kind of power yoga um, which I also teach but no you don't want to do that or hot Hot the Bikram yoga. yoga is that, is that Bikram, one? yeah, and these are all great forms of yoga, for sure. But you want something that's gentle when you're a senior. Of course, I have a, a couple of extremely fit seniors that come to my power yoga classes, mm -hmm. and they're generally an exception to the rule, and, mm -hmm. and that's great. But they know from their doctor and their own bodies that they can do that yoga as well, and they're. When I'm talking about them, there I have one that's 70, and she comes and does yoga right alongside the the 22-year-old, and does amazing, you know. But well, then, that's great. Yeah, but then other people, that's not an option. So gentle yoga is what you want to look for. Yeah, don't don't dive into power yoga. No, <laughs> Bikram yoga. That I did that one time, and I thought I was going to pass out. That right? is, it's in a big hot room, and it's like 110 in the room, and I'm thinking, oh, my, I mean. It's intense. I, I was in some good, people love this. Yeah, right, I yeah. don't get it. <laughs> yeah, some people love it. I have a friend who loves the hot, hot yoga. Yes. Really? Wow, yeah. I just think that's just so painful. <laughs> the heat alone is painful. Then you don't want to do right. <laughs> yeah. Do any other kind of yoga. Yeah. So what other things when you're working with your seniors do you do? So, um, well, we, we always start out with the breath. So we're mm -hmm. sitting in the chair or we're lying on the floor and we, and we do the breath. We do a lot of things for our hips. So we're on our backs and we're stretching out our hips, knees into our chest, moving our hips around, moving with our breath up and down, you know, and that opens up your low back, it opens up your hips. Um, we come into the standing poses a lot mm -hmm. and there we're strengthening our legs and our arms and our bodies and we try to stay there. So sometimes we'll do timed holds. So we'll, we'll and, and not everybody can hold the same amount of time, right? Mm -hmm. So we just work with it, we build up. So can you stay here five breaths? Can you stay here 30 seconds? Because you begin to build bone density at six seconds all the way to, it's supposed to be 72 seconds. That, that's the, what the studies show, right? So you're building more bone density the longer you stay there. And then you're building more muscle strength the longer you stay there as well. So yeah. are you also asking them to, when they're working out with you, to kind of pay attention to their diet and anything like that? If they inquire about that, I will happily talk with people. I don't usually press that with mm -hmm. people um, unless they talk to me individually. But part of yoga, you know, one part of it is, is being clean. It's called pure pure mm -hmm. purity salsa is the word for it and it is so that is about taking care of your body and what I've found in my own practice and with people that I know and worked with is that when you start doing yoga that comes with it so you'll just start being more healthy in your choices mm -hmm. just through the practice of, of doing yoga which is really interesting too you know I agree with you that I think when when any person mm -hmm. begins to start exercising you start feeling different and right. your body starts craving things a little bit more differently too. Yes. Yeah. So I would imagine you see a lot of transition over time with a lot of your clients. Yes, absolutely. And I can see it with them. 
um, just in their body. I can physically see the transitions as well. I have one woman who came in who had some extreme kyphosis so that her upper back was very rounded in, and that's what that like means, this right, this thing. Sorry. And right, and she has lots of other issues going on. Um, and we do this one pose where we lie on blocks and your heart is open. Your, your, I say your heart is open, mm -hmm. what I mean is your chest, so you're mm -hmm. lying back. And she loves that pose so much and it has completely changed her posture. That and is She's wonderful. been doing it for over a year now, once a week, maybe twice. And, yeah, so it is, it's very powerful. And even with my chair yoga, so when I was telling you those things that we do, we don't get on the floor with my mm -hmm. chair yoga students or, and we rarely stand up actually, mm -hmm. occasionally we do. Um, but we do all those things in a chair. So we move our arms a lot, we That's lean great. forward, we twist side to side a little bit and stretch out our legs in front of us and yeah. That's fun, that is great. Yeah. So how can our members here in the community find you? Well, let's see, I have a website it's my name spelled out, ColleenGavin.com. It's an A-N, G-A-V-A-N. Okay. Um, and my schedule is on there. So you okay. can do that. You could also call um, Family for Fitness, which is where I do senior gentle yoga. And that is in Vallecito. That is in Vallecito, yes. And I also teach at Intelligent Body Studio in Murphy's okay. on Main so Street. So they can find you at ColleenGavin.com. Yes. And they can find you if they actually just want to call the, the yeah, studio. Yeah, that's easier, right. They can call Family for Fitness in Vallecito. Mm -hmm. And then yes. also if they want to reach you at Intelligent Body and they're a little I'm bit there more too. power yoga oriented, yeah, they can go Yeah, and I do some well. gentle classes there as well. Oh, well, great. Yes. Colleen, it's been a pleasure to have you. Thank you this so much amazing. for having me. And I hope honor. all of you out there take her up on yoga. It is actually the most wonderful exercise and treat you can give your body. Thank you again for joining us on the Sandwich Crunch, where we manage and navigate the issues for seniors and boomers at home, work, and the community.